Sup Team KBA, one tick traveler here. Now today I'm actually packing for next week's trip to Jeju Island. It's a five day trip. And with that, I thought I'd break it down and give you a look into what I'm packing. Thought it'd be pretty cool to just share the kind of stuff that I've accumulated over time of how I try to travel a bit more smarter, a bit more leaner and uh, just overall fit the way I like to travel. Uh, Jeju is going to be really exciting. I've been there a couple of times and a beautiful island being just one hour away from Seoul by plane. So that's everything from bags, luggages, some of my like camera tech equipment accessories, and even my footwear and my sort of choices of why out of all the wider stuff that I have, these are the things that I've sort of selected for this trip. Now, if you find any of these that we are talking about today interesting, you'd like to learn more or even think that it's right for you that you wanna purchase, then I'll put a link to any unboxing video reviews that I've done in the past, as well as links to to where you can buy them, help support my channel, but more as a reference link. I hope you find this enjoyable and it'll be super awesome to hear how you like to travel and maybe your own smart traveling tips that others in our Team KBA community can benefit from. Let's get started. So a bit of context is always required because traveling of course is very different and the way you might travel for one or two days is going to be different if you're traveling for a week, for a month, or just even for a long period of time. So uh, Jeju is only gonna be a four, maybe five day trip, but it's going to involve a variety of things. I'm kind of there to hike Korea's tallest mountain, Halasan which is roughly 1,850 meters. So not the biggest by all means when it comes to like the world landscape, but for Korea, it represents uh, definitely a great challenge and a nice thing to take off as an experience. This will actually be my second time climbing Halasan, but there's definitely a variety of what I'm planning to do in Jeju. So first off, let's cover where I'm gonna put everything inside, which is the bags and the luggages. So on my right, uh, this is my carry-on luggage. It's from Victorinox. And I can't remember the model, but I've had this for a while, especially since I've been in Korea for a couple of years, but it's also what I was traveling with when I was in Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, reason why I like it, looks pretty clean and fresh. Let's put this bag down for now. The titanium has a, a nice sort of bronze look to it. So very different aesthetically and just uh, nice to look at. It's also super slim line. So this isn't an expandable luggage, um, but I like to be pretty lean or at least very light with my carry-on. So trying to compress or be a bit more thoughtful of what I want to bring means that this sort of smaller shell it's not going to be a big deal just makes you travel smarter and not overloading things when i'm going on the plane and strolling it down the aisle like it's not going to catch on to any of the chairs or like be really bulky to like maneuver it's super thin it's of course as light as whatever you are bringing but i find just storing this away like above my seats it's just very easy and especially if it's a busy flight this can like fit into smaller spaces it's worked really well the double wheels on the bottom also uh, has been very durable we have one handle on the top and then we have another handle here i kind of use them a lot and i like how this kind of locks if it's like really heavy so if i'm carrying here it's not going to suddenly like break it's built into the design and we've got the tsa lock just here unlike a normal luggage we have a usb port here so there's a separate compartment you can just throw in your uh, portable power charger plug the cable here and you can charge it without having to fiddle or take it out of your bag and stuff so very clean design that being said my phone usb port did mess up in ocean world so uh, i have to rely on wireless charging which means i can't really plug it that way unless i put the wireless charging cradle on here but hey ho this is what it looks like when it's opened up so pretty standard but we've got a few unique features um this part here is actually removable because it's victorinox they kind of have a, a pocket for their like swiss army knives of course carry on you cannot bring it 
if you're checking in, it's not bad. Or if you're like on a day trip or just traveling by road, then you can definitely store it here. Otherwise, don't bring it in your carry-on. Uh, but this is removable if you prefer, but I like throwing my smaller accessories in here, like my power bank and just additional things. They have the mesh piece here that has a zipper. So I found, you know, put my Nintendo Switch, my travel wallet fits in nicely, and just makes most of that space. The wheels are, is kind of, recessed into the body. They've kind of curved it and made the space between the wheel also usable. So you get a little bit more space here than you would on a normal luggage. Again, it being slim and uh, not expandable, it's kind of those touches that makes it a little bit more practical to use. And then when we divide it, it's kind of a nice catch-all whether you're just gonna put in your clothes or use packing cubes. So I'm gonna be using packing cubes to kind of set the different clothes that I want to wear. That is my carry-on luggage you're kind of allowed like a laptop bag and a carry-on luggage so this should be fine out of all the bags that i have um, i decided to go with this one it's from a brand called able carry i think this is going to do a good job for my hike up to halasan it's not got too much going on but has a distinctive look because of its tapered sort of shell on the front so it kind of leans a bit more to your body and it's not going to sort of tilt or weigh you down the shoulder padding is really thick we have chest straps and then on the back you can see additional mesh padding for hopefully extra comfort and then some gaps where the air can sort of flow and not build up a lot of that sweat you can of course just adjust the straps if you want a looser fit but I like having a tighter fit. It's a really well made bag. This is actually made of X pack material. So if you're familiar with that material, they have like a signature X sort of on the outer lining visible. I quite like the design. Um, and while the tapered look kind of reduces the overall usable space inside, it's still more than reasonable enough. We have a mesh pocket here that I like as kind of a, a drop and then the laptop compartments. While I'm not planning to bring my main laptop, I also been bringing my tablet just if I need to offload any video or photos or just access the internet while I'm there, maybe even Netflix. It's fairly light, but really rigid. So I had to say my Peak Design Everyday Backpack, like version one, that was really heavy um, and not the most comfortable to wear. So even though the capacity isn't as like large, I like the overall balance in terms of style, the footprint, and overall usable space. Now finally, we do have this side zipper. I like the way it sort of slits from the side. It goes into the main space where you can regularly put things and take out of without having to go into the main compartment and expose all of those stuff. Let's move on to the stuff that I'm putting inside. Next up are my shoes. So I'm bringing one for climbing, one is like my everyday, and then one if I'm heading to the beach or just being by the swimming pool in the places that we are staying. So first up, this is kind of the more exciting one. These are my Viva Barefoot Magna Trails. I unboxed them previously. It didn't get around to actually publishing my review, so I'm gonna do that after this trip. But I really like these, the aesthetic's very cool. It's an all black, it's made out of Kajura, so very durable. It's also waterproof, so these have been killer when it's like heavy rain outside or even big puddles. They also have thermal soles, so if you are like hiking or climbing in the winter when it's really cold, below zero, which it can in Korea, um, these are just going to give your feet a little bit more warmth for longer than you would with conventional shoes. I can attest to that, uh, especially when it was like minus 10 degrees. Definitely pair it with some like merino wool socks and that would work well. Reason why I like it, it's got super high traction on the grip, so really made for that terrain, whether it's rocky or stuff. So um, this should be perfect climbing up Kalasan. And uh, yeah, I like more of the mid-height shoe, gives it more of an aesthetic. And yeah, being waterproof, lightweight, very malleable, so there's no hard sole that allows my feet to like connect with the rocks and use more of the different sensor points of my feet. Next up, it's like my everyday shoe. So these are my Adidas Nisa. You can see it's a little bit dirty. I'm supposed to like hand wash it and clean it before Jeju, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, but these are like supposed to be my everyday all white shoes. It's just more than an outfit. I do have my Viva Barefoot Geocorp Men's, but those have a bit more of a sportier look. So these are just more casual to like dress down with. And uh, yeah, works well. It's got really thick soles. Uh, I don't really mind. I'm pretty tall, but yeah, just something I noticed. And then just your basic slippers in white uh, for 
if I'm hitting up the, the swimming pools or even at the beach, it's supposed to be good weather in Jeju, so I'm banking on that. And then finally, my pair of socks. I actually really like these. They're longer length, so they're gonna go halfway up my shins. These are in medium, and they have some performance properties, so a bit more compressive around the mid, helps with wicking moisture away and doesn't build up those gnarly smells. If you're familiar with using like cotton or basic socks when you're working out in, so black and white, having the variety, black would definitely go with my magnet trails. Those are my footwear. And uh, I just keep this in a basic shoe bag. I need to update that. Maybe Peak Designs a shoe bag that collapses might be nice. All right, now we can get a little bit closer and focus on the small accessories that I'm bringing. So first off, my water bottle is from Lark. Uh, besides being insulated, which is great if it ends up being sunny, super rehydrating. Uh, it has UVC light, which prevents bacterial buildup, just keeps my water fresh for longer. And it's just a great source of purifying even your drinkable water at home. They have the Lark Bottle Movement, which is a lighter version made for like hiking, but removes some of the insulation qualities, which I prefer this, even though it weighs a little bit heavier. And yeah, this is kind of going to be my main water bottle climbing up Al Halasan. Probably won't be enough, so I might bring an additional one or just pick something when I'm already in Jeju. But this being like the key one to refresh. Um, this is my travel wallet from Bellroy. Um, it's a designer edition. I don't know if they still do it. I had it for my nine month trip uh, to Japan, Hong Kong and South Korea before. Um, I haven't done a video on this. I never got around to it. Kind of ages nicely. It has this sort of smooth texture, of course, made with leather. And this is more of a travel wallet. So multiple areas where you can put your cards, also your different currencies. I still have some leftover but from the Thailand and uh, Vietnamese dong <laughs> and then uh, you can put your passport here it's a smart way of doing it the other more functional wallets but I like this because it's got a very slim footprint and looks pretty cool too next up is my power bank is from Rap Power again I've had this for years it's heavy very weighty uh, but this is a 27,000 milliamp charger it has USB-C, two USB ports, like USB-A ports, and then a micro USB. Um, I like this just for the versatility, even though it does weigh a lot. Uh, this has really powered a lot of my accessories along the way, including my phone, my smartphone, uh, even my tablet shortly. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of newer power banks that are far smaller, higher charge, and probably higher like USB-C fast charging wattage. Um, but considering this was like pretty inexpensive, maybe $30, $40 or maybe less, I don't remember. Um, it's still been a great companion. Probably replace it at some point, um, especially since my Asus G14 has like fast charging. So having a higher wattage wouldn't be a bad idea. But that's my portable charger. To go alongside that, I mentioned my phone USB port. Uh, the water sort of corroded it and it, I always get that notification which says there's like debris or water. Um, it's kind of permanently damaged the USB-C port on my Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which means I have to rely on wireless charging. Uh, it comes with their USB-C cables that are really durable and highly versatile. I've got one here, so we'll talk about that. Um, but this, I like bringing it to the cafe as well as just a standalone uh, stand for my phone. But also if I just plug it in with the USB-C to my laptop. It also wireless charges at the same time. So very useful, also pretty clean. Uh, it does have one fixed position and it has the coils here for wireless charging, but also very stylish too. This is the USB cable kind of like for the Nomad wireless charger. This one I like because it has different endings. Uh, this is also 100 watts compatible. So great for those fast charging devices. It has USB-C as the main port, but you have head adapters for micro USB and USB-A. So when it comes to transferring things, I can kind of have this as a one cable for all variety of devices. So that's definitely handy. And then I'll also be bringing this. So this is my like multiple USB adapter. I kind of interchange the main power outlet depending where I am. So in the UK, it'll be the standard like three pin. Uh, in Korea, I would just take one from my appliance here. This is a great versatile adapter to have when you are traveling. Reason why I like it, if you find yourself short on ports or like power sockets, then I have a total of four USB-A slots to charge things at the same time. And then I also have a USB-C port here as well. There's a total of, I believe, 60 watts 
or maybe 45. Um, so if I plug in the USB-C, it's going to get the max. It does split the, the overall like wattage between more devices if you have plenty connected. But if I'm charging things overnight and I don't mind the slower charge, then this is really super handy to have. Finally, as my main like tech organizer is the power pack organizer from side by side because it's super slim. It has plenty of different like straps, ports, pockets. Uh, great to also put your charging adapter inside. And it's very easy to just slot inside your bag without taking up a lot of space. I did a video of it a couple of years ago when I was in Hong Kong, so you can check it out. But overall, this is going to put all of those cables and accessories, tidy it all up. Finally, my main tech device, you, you didn't think I was gonna leave without any computer, right? Um, but I decided to bring my original Surface Go. So again, I did a video on it previously. And I like this just more as a travel companion uh, if I decide I wanna write while I'm there, maybe document my journey. Uh, also just for consuming media. So watching Netflix, it has a USB-C port so I can also connect it to the TV. And uh, yeah, just gives me means for a wider screen if I wanna browse the internet and just check things while I'm traveling. Always useful to have, I'll definitely leave it in my luggage when I'm hiking, but always good to have some main computer and this being full Windows. Super snappy, even a couple of years and being able to charge on USB-C, very travel friendly. So those are kind of the main travel accessories. And that kind of wraps up everything I'm packing inside my luggage and my bag for Jeju Island, my next trip ahead. Hopefully you found it useful, insightful, and just gives you an idea of how I like to pack, what I'm putting inside. Can't wait to show you our journey ahead in Jeju climbing up Halasan. So thanks a lot Team KBA. I know it was a long video, but give you an updated look of what's inside my bag. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, keep being awesome. Peace.